Good morning. I'm going to show you what we're doing for cycle one, week three, or what I'm using this week. With math, we're going to be counting the fives and the sixes. With the fives, you're going to be doing row, row, row your boat um, is the tune, and you're going to be rowing while you do the five. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. The sixes, you're going to be singing um, the sixes to the tune to mark it while you do punching. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four. Actually, I can't even sing that tune because I haven't done it. Latin, we're doing the noun endings, the first declension, and we're not going to label it when we say it. You don't say nominative, singular, ah, genitive, singular, I. You don't do that. You just say um, singular, ah, I, I, um, ah, and you go through, and then you do the plural, and so you don't have to label them all um, individually. At home, I'm going to have my children write these out on a chart and copy them going down the line of singular and plural throughout the week to help them. What are some parts of an animal cell? Nucleus, cytoplasm, vacuole, mitochondria, cell membrane, and Golgi bodies. We made up just a little story. Um, it's a memory story to help the kids. It has their the word points to help them. So we say, an animal is new to a cell. Nucleus. An animal is nucleus to a cell. And he wasn't feeling very well, and he would cytoplasm. And then he decided to vacuole. And then he bumped his toe. And he said, my toe, Chondria. And he sat down and held his cell membrane. He said, oh, gee, bodies. So those are just some little points in a story that I'm going to... I'm going to refine them with my kids and, and go over them. Later on in the week, my daughters and I, were going to actually make an animal cell with green jello. Or maybe that's the plant cell. I'll have to look for the animal cell. Maybe it's red jello. And you put in marshmallows and all different things. If you just Google it on Pinterest or Yahoo, you'll find it. For English, we're doing the prepositions along, amid, among, around, at, atop. So for along, you make fists and you run your body, you run your fists alongside your body. So along, amid, you point at the ground, you're kind of amid your fingers, among, like that, around, and you stop at your sternum, atop. So at was stopping at your sternum. For geography, I'm going to show you my geography map. First I'm going to do the continents, then I'm going to do the blot map. I'm going to give my kids a blank map where they have to first put in the great circles across, and then they'll know where the continents lie um, according to where they fall on which great circle. And so I'm going to have them try and do that from memory. I'll probably put this on the table if um, things start getting frustrating. I'll show you the, the map for this geography, if I can show you. There we are. So Judah is in orange, Israel is in blue, Jordan River in red, Dead Sea in green, Phoenicia in yellow, and the Sea of Galilee in light blue. I might use hand motions for those. We were talking about doing the Lion of Judah, um, the letter I for Israel, the Jordan River, the Dead Sea, um, Phoenicia, this is our Phoenicia, and then the Sea of Galilee is the stormy sea that Jesus calmed. So if you want hand motions for that for your kiddos through the week, you can use that. Tell me about the Greek and Roman gods. We learn about these gods to be aware of false gods. Um, these gods were worshipped in Greece and Rome under, uh, it was the same god but a different name. So Zeus was Jupiter, Hera, Juno, Ares, Mars, Aphrodite, Venus, Artemis, Diana, Hermes, Mercury. So Zeus was the god of lightning and, and the sky, so you hold a thunderbolt over your head. Hera was the goddess of marriage, so you put a ring on your finger. Ares was the god of war, so you throw a spear. Aphrodite was the god of love, so you make a heart. Artemis Diana was the goddess of hunting in the moon, so you shoot up at the moon with an arrow. Hermes Mercury was a messenger god, so you can make yourself fly. He was um, always running messages. For the timeline, it's Hinduism, that's the sign for spirit, or the, the great spirit um, that they believe in, Raman. So Hinduism in India, Phoenicians and the alphabet, Olmecs of Mesoamerica, Israelite Exodus and Desert Wanderings, Israelite Conquest and Judges, Greek Dark Ages, Israel's United Kingdom. And 
I've been saying the continent that we're studying in geography is Africa. That's not the continent we're studying. We're studying the, the ancient, um, ancient civilizations, and we're really going to be focusing right around here, and it actually goes into Asia, some of, some of that. I know the Nile in Egypt is in Africa, but I think I said that in an earlier video, and I wanted to clarify that. Presentations this week, we're going over eye contact, and it says, eye contact, look at each member of the audience in order to make them feel special and prepare their hearts for the message you have to share. Remember, people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. And for eye contact, I wrote, we were given eyes to show that we care through our attentiveness and our ob observance to others. And when I sit down, I notice my kiddos give their presentations and they look at me and when I'm right next to them because they're looking for confirmation. So I'm going to move my chair to the back of the class and sit in the very back of the class so that they have to kind of look through everyone to look at me. Um, that way they're not just looking um, at the tutor. So that's what I have for presentations. The science experiment, we're talking about the blending. Experiment 57 and ground temperature 58. For blending, we're talking about purpose, hypothesis, materials, procedure, results, conclusion, and we're talking about how animals were given, they were given a camouflage by God based on their, where they, their habitat is and what they were designed to do. And so I'm, I gave them a paper, which they will guess why that happens. I have both on the same same page, both experiments. And there's a great snowy owl, which is really white for its environment so that it blends in. There's an arctic fox actually changes color throughout the year to blend in with his surroundings. So those are some things that I'm going to point out. I'm going to bring in some pictures of animals that are camouflaged in their natural habitat. And I'm going to just talk about um, God's truth that, you know, God cares so much about everything, all of his creation, and he put an order to it so that we could have dominion over the earth and we could reproduce and survive. And how much more, if he cares about a sparrow falling and these animals' ability to hide from predators and giving them, you know, the mechanisms and the adaptations to survive, how much more does he not care about us for our protection, for our for our good, and for us to carry out our purpose that we were designed to complete. And so that's probably going to be the truth that I share. I'm going to try and find a, a Bible verse that, that brings that home. But I'm also going to bring in a lot of pictures where the kids have to find the animal. And I thought it would be really neat if you had extra animal stuff. You could show animal skin and how it blends in. Like we have a rattlesnake skin that we could show how that blends in. With the fine art, I'm going to be talking about upside down image. And one thing I saw online, it said, with a fine art reminder, make sure you tell the kids that there's no wrong way to draw, not to be upset at their first attempt, because it's hard. I did some research, and Picasso and Michelangelo actually copied work for two years of others. Bef as part of their training before they started um, doing their own work. So it's, it's good to, be, to try our best, but as long as they're not getting upset. And, and these images, these are common images kids see. And then you turn it upside down, and your logical left brain gets all in a tizzy, and your right brain is um, a little bit more uh, spatial, I think it said here. It said we're trying to see with our right side of our brain and have them draw their name, turn the paper upside down and then have them replicate their name as one of their, the exercises. And then for, I have a monkey, I'm going to cut this in half whoop, for two students to use and then have them draw it upside down. There's a heart for the face and a dot for the eye and a curve for the tail. So make sure you point out those five basic elements of shape. Especially because I know we're getting um, some new new students are coming to our class, so we want to be prepared for, for them to maybe review it a little bit if you can point that out. So that's all I have for this week. If you think of something, let me know to add, and I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.